Today's episode is part two of my two-part special on American German healthcare system and why Americans don't want to go for socialized healthcare. Hello, Jean Lieblings, I'm Madi science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. As I said before, today's episode is a part two of a two-part special. My previous episode was the similarities and differences, mostly differences, between the American and German healthcare system. And today I'm going to give you my personal hot take on why Americans have been hesitant up until recently with this whole COVID-19 business, why they've been so hesitant to adopt a more socialized healthcare system. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about living abroad and writing and everything in between. So quick disclaimer, I am one American out of a population of 327.2 million Americans. So. I am only speaking from my experiences and what I have observed. I may have been missing other, I, you know, during this, this, this topic, I may be missing other points. That is fine. Feel free to correct me. Feel free to point out other reasons why you think Americans are, have been hesitant about adopting something like what Germany has. And yeah, so we're going to, we're going to, try to tackle it. Also, I do want to add that a lot of these ideas, a lot of these arguments that I am that I'm going to talk about today, a lot of them are very quickly because of COVID-19 being rejected because Americans through this very trying time are the ones that haven't already seen the flaws before are really starting to see the flaws. And I really hope this does serve as a wake up call to start some kind of change and to figure out a better healthcare system than the dumpster fire we currently have. So Let's get on to the list. Reason number one, mostly because Americans don't really know any different. Only 42% of Americans even own a passport. That means that less than half of Americans leave the US. So, and nonetheless, not only do they not leave the US, but a lot of times are not even in said foreign countries long enough to really get into the nitty gritty of how those countries function, which would include how their politics and their healthcare system works. Now, I don't want you guys to go and start pointing fingers, oh, Americans are so uncultured, blah, 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 blah. Because the reason why a lot of Americans don't leave the country is a whole other video in and of itself. So if you are interested in my hot take and why Americans don't travel, definitely let me know in the comments below. I do have, you know, my, theories and my hot take on that and I'm more than happy to share them with you so please let me know in the comments below because it's it, it is too much of a topic to try to tackle in this episode when I'm already tackling a bigger subject so the big thing is what it boils down to when I said in my previous episode is that right now all we're hearing are from our politicians saying there's only like two paths we can take for our healthcare system and Unfortunately, like I said, Americans don't get outside of the US to realize there are other options. There are other ways of having a healthcare system where everybody can have access to affordable healthcare. So that is a big reason right now. It's just lack of knowledge. Reason number two is that it has the word socialism in it. Yeah, we're that old chestnut that uh, Americans are still a lot of Americans are still against anything that has the word socialism in it, which is, oh. yeah. I mean, the Cold War ended in 1991, guys. Like, you know, we do need to realize, we also need to remember that there are a lot of other programs within the United States that are already socialized, like education, our police department, fire department. We already have concepts of socialist programs in our country. Why can't we extend that to healthcare? A lot of people haven't quite made that leap yet, but mostly because it has the word socialism in it. And But this, like I said, this is definitely one of the ideas that we're starting to reject, especially after the 2016 elections where Bernie Sanders came in with us being a democratic socialist. Um, that was a big deal in the U.S. That was a big deal having a candidate that was openly a candidate with the word socialism on their ticket. Like, that's huge, guys. That's huge. On the other hand, for my American audiences... I hope you realize that the there there are several parties, political parties in Germany, but one of the big ones, the two big ones is the Christian Democratic Union and the Socialist Party of Germany. Socialist Party of Germany. Like, 
<laughs> All right, guys, just, just FYI. <laughs> Reason number three is that Americans are under the impression that socialized healthcare will actually cost more than their current healthcare system, which is not true. <laughs> so the numbers I have from here are from 2017. So in 2017, the U.S. paid $10,207 per person, while Germany paid $5,848. Almost half. The GDP of that year, the U.S. paid 17.1% and Germany paid 11.2%. And the health insurance coverage in the U.S. in 2017 was 91.9%, which left 8.8% uninsured, and that's the equivalent of 28.5 million Americans. And that's also, we can't forget the even larger number of Americans who are underinsured. And underinsured means that you have health insurance, but it actually really doesn't cover anything. It's, it's, yeah, it's useless. On the other hand, Germany, their health insurance, 100%, 100% of the population is covered. Reason number four is wait times. This goes back to reason number one with, with Americans just not knowing. Um, we are told by our politicians, or at least the, at least the people that I've heard of are, have argued about this, they're parroting what their local politician has said, is that they're gonna have to wait six months before you can see a doctor. And by doctor, I mean like house arts, general practitioner. No. <laughs> I will tell you right now, Americans, I have never waited to have an appointment with my doctor. If I'm sick, I get an appointment that day. The only times where I may have had to wait uh, is to see my gynecologist, but it's because everybody, you know, like you, you should be planning this stuff a little bit more advanced. When I first came to Germany, I was not on the ball on that and trying to get last minute appointments. Not as easy, but you know, whatever. And that was mostly having to do with like birth control. The big thing where you will have to wait is for specialists, and it's no different than waiting for a specialist, a specialist in the United States. Actually, in fact, if you look back on my 2017 numbers, the wait times in Germany to see a specialist is still shorter than the US. So that's not a really good argument, guys. <laughs> Reason number five is lobbyists. And this goes back to the whole politician thing because unfortunately lobbyists are the shit stain of the American country. Uh, and the reason why we can't have nice things in my home country, that not only not only includes healthcare, but you know, like reasonable gun laws and you know, other nice things. We don't have them because lobbyists have deep pocket, uh, deep, yeah, they have deep pockets and our politicians are greedy. Yeah, that's a, that's a big, big reason. Health insurance lobbyists make so much money and they are working very hard to make sure that we do not change anything about our current dumpster fire of a healthcare system. And reason number six is the U.S. doesn't really have a sense of community compared to the Germans. I mean, U.S. Americans are very much about individuality. And for a lot of, a lot of things, it's, it is, it's a, it is a great trait to have. But in terms of trying to make sure that everybody has access to affordable health care, it is the, it is the worst trait to have. And part of it, you know, like I said, it comes down to this whole individualistic mentality. Like, one of the biggest arguments I hear is like, why, you know, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and so did my pappy and so did my grandpappy. So why should that asshole American, that poor American get a free ride? I had to work for what I get. You know, being poor is a choice. So they shouldn't get a free ride. You know, that, that, that is literally an argument I hear all the time. I remember when I was old enough to start to understand these arguments that were, you know, floating around. One of the, the biggest things I heard was, you know, why does healthy American A have to pay for unhealthy American B who chose to be a smoker and therefore got lung cancer or chose to eat the very unhealthy but very delicious American junk food and therefore got diabetes? Like, that is one big thing. Like, why should I have to pay for that? I'd rather just pay for myself if I get sick. And if I'm not sick, I save money. Woot, woot, woot. And that is, that is literally like the biggest, biggest argument that I've seen against socialized healthcare, saving money. So I mean, and I say we Americans have, you know, this little sense of community. I mean, not that, not that we don't care about other people, you know, 
but we don't look as America as a as we don't look as a country of America as a whole community. Our our community only extends to like our association, like our clubs or our sororities or fraternities or our churches. It is the community we can physically see. That is our community. And it's very much like out of sight, out of mind. If we don't see them, then they're not important to me. To hell with everybody else because I'm just going to take care of my people. So it is very easy to 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 have that mentality. But for example, like. I have I have had relatives that have gone bankrupt because of of going bank well because of their healthcare bills. So for me personally, I've seen firsthand how the system just doesn't work. So of course I'm like you know get on my high horse and I want to 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 you know fight this injustice. I know a lot of people that if they didn't have that relative or they didn't see that firsthand, they would automatically be like, mm, hell, I even see relatives that know about the, this relative who has had this problem and still be like, well, that's your choice. Because they just don't care. They just don't care because they pulled themselves by their bootstraps. And I'm going to get into this. This is a lot more complicated. Because you see, I, I actually didn't even realize this whole like lack of community idea with the, the US. My parents actually pointed it out to me the last time they were in Germany. They were just like, wow, like Germans really... It's, they, they told me this the last night that they were there. They're like, Germans really have this sense of community. This is not, you will not see this in the States. And like I said, it, I, I make it sound like it's, a, it's, it's an awful trait to have. And there are, that's not necessarily true. It is a trait that we have. We do have the ability to be empathetic to our fellow man and we can rise above it. But it is something you have to realize that this individualistic mentality has come about since the, the creation of our country. Like you can't, it, you can't ignore the fact that the US is a country of immigrants. You know, everybody who came to the United States, like they wanted to fulfill the American dream, which most of them came with like nothing in their pockets and they worked really hard and they built something of themselves to build a better life for their children and their descendants. And that is really cool. I don't know of any other country in the world that has that. And it is what makes America great. And in order to succeed in that, you do have to have that individualistic mentality. I mean, like, I think it's really cool to see that, like you, you know, the idea that you come to the United States and you work really hard and you see that hard work pay off until you get sick and you have to go to the hospital and then you lose all that savings to your medical bills. And then we come full circle to what we're talking about. <laughs> you see, Germany created their health system back in 1883. The US at that, that very same year was actually going through its second great wave of immigrants you know these are people that you know we didn't we didn't have the idea of a safety net we weren't thinking about about that while germany was thinking about that because you know when you were an immigrant in the u.s you came and you knew that you had to work if you got sick you couldn't work and if you couldn't work you couldn't get paid if you couldn't get paid you couldn't provide for your family it was that simple you didn't have a safety net our country didn't wasn't thinking about creating a safety net so when you look at what American like the our ancestors did you know like the amazing things that they created I mean the Brooklyn Bridge for example was was completed in 1883 by the way and how they can create these amazing things at the expense of their bodies and their health and their mental capacity like that it you, you can't help but f to but be in all of these people you know but Americans, I feel like they, they forget that they don't have to live this life anymore. You know, we're, we're, we're no longer th that country anymore. We are a developed country. We're supposed to be a powerhouse. And a powerhouse should be able to take care of its own citizens and provide affordable health care. I think we Americans allow our pride to get in the way because, you know, we look at our ancestors and think, you know what, they could do it. They, you know, it is a sense of pride to be able to like, keep working even though you're deathly ill, which is really stupid by the way, because if you get everybody else sick, that's not good for the company. And that's how Germany reacts when you're sick. But in the US, it's like, no, I, you know, it's still like not caring about the community. It's still about like thinking of the self. I can work hard. I can show everybody that it doesn't matter how sick I can get. I can still get the job done because, you know, my ancestors did it and I had th that blood is flowing through my veins. And if they can do it, I can do it. And and that whole thing, like it does inadvertently cause a lot of Americans to literally weigh their entire self-worth and their value and tie that to their jobs. But that's also a deep dive for another episode. We're not going to tackle that today. But just so you know, like that's 
all of that mentality then, you know, causes us to, to kind of be workaholics and, and, and always try to find ways to, to whatever we do, we make money off of it. And unfortunately, there's no, there is no entity that abuses this mentality more than the employer, which is why we have these laughable ideas of, you know, a sick day like where you're only allowed to be sick six days out of the year, or if not, you have your PTO, which is your paid time off, which is the bundle of your sick days and your vacation all in one, and you only get like 10. So if you're sick and you need to take days off, well, you can't use that later for vacation. While in Germany, it's completely opposite. Your sick days are determined by your doctor. Your employer has no say, you have no say. I mean, you kind of have a say. If you really feel like, you know, it, de it depends. Of course, your doctor's still gonna make that final call, but if they, you know, they want to not be liable if they're sending a, a sick person back to work when it's too early, they would rather have you stay a little bit longer at home. And honestly, I'm fine with that. I, you know, because the, our company does not lose its efficiency. We can't afford to have, you know, with with having so many holidays and so many vacation days already in Germany, we can't afford to lose more people because of sick days. So I'd rather, you know, it's better to just have that one person out sick than that person stay at work and potentially get the rest of the office sick. And honestly, I'm really interested to see how, what's gonna happen after we figure out what our new normal is after COVID-19 because like I said, this is, it's showing a lot of the flaws why we need a better healthcare system. But as you can see, there's a lot of things still getting in the way of, of trying to go a little bit further towards more socialized. Um, if you saw my previous episode and my deep dive into what the German healthcare system looks like, I, I, th I think that's a viable choice for Americans because it still kind of plays into individuality, being able to ch actually choose what your, you know, who your healthcare provider or what your healthcare insurance is and having, you know, having that choice and, and feeling like you have some control in this. I, I, I think... I think if I want to try to look at, you know, the positive out of this whole situation, I really do think that Americans are waking up to to the fact that we need something better. And the idea of socialized healthcare, I I do think that I will see that in my lifetime. I don't I don't know when. I hope it's before I have grandchildren. <laughs> but I do think it is possible. We're we are moving in that direction. I feel like most of the people that are really fighting it are the much, 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 much older generation. Not all of them, of course, because like my dad is a boomer and he is absolutely for like he sees how my life here is in Germany. He's like, yes, what you have, we need to bring that to the States. Like, yes, yes, yes. So I, I don't want to like lump boomers together with that. But I feel like most of the argument, especially the arguments that I've been hearing growing up, usually that generation. But I still also hear from my generation as well, fighting for it. I've actually had somebody tell me that they would rather be in debt than be in a healthcare that was run by the government. So I guess that's reason number eight. <laughs> you have people like that, that are, that, that are, that are, de they are, they, no, are we, I refuse to change it. They are determined to keep our, our crappy healthcare system because they don't want the government involved. So what do you guys think? What do you think of all this? Like, holy crap, right? Holy crap. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And thank you so much for joining me and listening to my crazy ass ramblings. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and Roxy and YouTube know that you like videos like this and you want to see more. Isn't that right? She's like taking a nap right now. <laughs> If you have any other questions or comments or topics you would like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. The God Queen is available in both ebook and paperback. I have all the links for the book in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And that's it for today. Until next time. Adieu!